and how we need to have faith that. in God. What did we talk about last week? Does anybody remember? Cora? Jacob and Israel. Jacob and Israel. Yeah. I remember that. She wasn't even here and she knows. That's because she's amazing. I still don't see how they're two different people. I thought they she aren't. names. They aren't people. Well, two different people. Well, it talks about it in the story, it seems like they're two different people. It what? kind of does, but Jacob is renamed Israel. So it's a name change. It's not two different people. Why did they say Jacob's still in the story then? It is a little weird. Yeah. So what was the significant thing that we learned from Jacob? What did we take away from that talk on Jacob? Cora? Um, that Jacob like, loved his son more than any of the younger sons. That's not what we talked about last week, though. Leo? Uh, about oh. him and Esau and how he was going to be the father. Yeah, he receives the promise of Abraham, right? That he would he would continue that lineage, that he would be the father of God's people, right? And then what was the big conversation that we had at the end of that, where Jacob and Esau meet? Yeah, Ashley. Esau ran towards him and hugged him or embraced him. Yeah, oh, and, and what happened there? What was what was given to Jacob in that moment? <gasps> Thomas. His brother back. His brother back, yeah, Peter? Um, Joel doesn't have one of these papers. Joel doesn't have one of Call those papers. Call on Ashley, please. No, I'll be 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 would be the father of God's people. And we also talked about that forgiveness. That forgiveness that Esau shows to Jacob even though Jacob wronged his brother. And how, how did that apply to us? How does this apply to us? Cora? him, but that he runs to us and embraces us, right? We're like the prodigal son. Do you guys remember that story that we yeah. talked about? Yeah. We sin, and yet God runs to us and forgives us. This is God. And then, Cora, how, does this, how, how then should we live? How does we should forgive one another, right? We should we should act as God acted with us, and we should be gracious and willing to forgive one another. We should be gracious and willing to forgive one another. So what does this look like in your life? What does this look like in your life? Yeah, Alex. Forgiving each other. Yeah, we forgive each other, right? Forgiving my sister. Forgiving your sister. Cooper? Forgiving my brother, Kaysen. Forgiving your brother, Kaysen. Yeah, okay, Cora? Like, if sometimes people owe you at school, you forgive them. Yeah, when people wrong you, you forgive them. 
Cindy? Forgive everyone. Forgive everyone. Good. Yes. A nice, a nice cover the top answer. All right. So who are we talking about this week? Alex? Joseph. What's that? Joseph. Joseph. Good. We're talking about Joseph this week. We're talking about Joseph this week. Alright, so we have another video. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! 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 Talk about that at the end. Ooh, well, 
I, I know. Hold on to that thought, though. Okay? That's a really good thought. Leah. See, if you're counting the 40, so the slavery handle. I was going to answer that. Oh, the next question? How many brothers did Joseph have? He had 11 before he went to Egypt when he turned um. Well, when they came to him, he had 12. Not quite. You're right, though, that he had 11 brothers. He had 11 brothers, right? He had 11 brothers. With him, he was 12. That's, it was a title. With him, there's 12. But he had 11 brothers. Okay? 11 brothers. And that includes... Uh, that includes his little brother. How old is So, fun fact, why is that number important? Why is 12 important? Where do we see 12 in Scripture? Okay. It's a, it's a good amount of sons, right? His name's definitely going to carry on. Joel? What? Joel? What? You, you're oh, raising um, your hand. Never mind. Never mind? Okay. Carter? Because Jesus had 12 disciples. Jesus had 12 disciples. Yes, that's part of it. But the, that's significant for another reason, too. What's that big overriding reason? Leo? Because there's 12 tribes. There's 12 tribes of Israel. This is the beginning of the 12 tribes of Israel. This is the beginning of those 12 tribes. Okay? So this is the 12 tribes of Israel. And, and um, Carter, you're exactly right. Jesus had 12 disciples. And that's significant, too, because of the 12 tribes of Israel. Good. All right, so what does Joseph do first? What does Joseph do first in our story for today? Thomas? Um, he... All right, that's okay. Cora? He sort of like brags about his dreams to his brothers and father. Yeah, so he, he tells his family about his dreams. He tells his parents and his brothers about his dreams. I'm not sure that I would use the word brag, but he does tell his family about his dreams. Why did he do this? Why did he do this? Thomas? Um, because it showed um, his family face off like that in the village, and um, the sun, the, the sun is started like that. But, but why? Why did he tell his family that? Ashley? It's because he's interpreting the dreams and wants to tell them about it. He doesn't interpret the dreams, he just tells them the dreams. He just oh, tells them the dreams. Dreams. Because remember he says that it means that all, his whole family is bound down to him. And no, that's the, that's the brother's interpretation of the dream. Oh. They mix that up. That's the way that they take the dream. Oh, no, you're right. Ellie? Because he thought they were important. Because he thought they were important. That's what I think, too. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We, all this. we don't know why Joseph tells his family and we don't know why he tells his family this. Could he have been bragging? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. No. Could he have been telling them just because he thinks this is something significant? Maybe. That's what I think. He yeah. might have even been scared. He might have even been scared. What is this that I'm dreaming? Mm -hmm. The reality is that the text doesn't tell us. The text doesn't tell us why he does this. It only tells us that he does this. Alex? He could have thought it was a sort of vision. What's that? Sort of vision of the future. He could have thought that. Yeah, he could have thought that they were visions of the future. We're going to find out that that's kind of what it is. That's kind of what it is. But what does this teach us about Scripture? 
The fact that we don't know why he does this, what does this teach us about Scripture? Ashley? We don't know what God's going to do, but we know it's always going to be for the best. Okay, sure. Sure, that's a good interpretation of it. I was leaning more along the lines of we, what we are told is what we need to know. We don't need to know more than what Scripture tells us. We don't need to know more than what Scripture tells us. We take Scripture as at its word. We don't add to it, and we don't take away from it. There we go. You looking at the next one? Yeah. This is all. What we are told all. Yeah, we are told all that we need to know. Yeah, we are told all that we need to know. Let you know when you have like a birthday party or something coming up. Sure. It's true. Uh, but but the point is is that is that that detail isn't important. It's not important that um, why Joseph tells his family. That's not important. What is important, Ashley? Well, what is important is that um, he told his family. Is that he told his family. That's the important part, right? That's the important part. Good. And that's important to remember, especially as we go through Genesis, and even throughout the rest of the Bible, is that we are always told what we need to know. If the detail isn't there, it's not important. It's not important. But God tells us all that we need to know in His Word. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like how the important thing is that God created the earth. The not important fact is why he didn't create it sooner. Right. Oh, we don't need to ask all those questions okay. of why this, why that. Because I asked that question last year and there was no answer. There was no answer. What happened? You were it? I do. <laughs> Good. There is no answer. And it's because that question is not important, right? It's not important for us to know. We might want to know. It might be fun to speculate, but, <laughs> but we don't need to know. All right, so what is the response to this? Joseph tells his brothers and his family, well, and his parents, his whole family, this dream. What is their response? See, you guys have answered a lot. <laughs> Ellie? Yeah, and so they respond out of um, anger. What? Anger. 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 Yeah. They anger. They respond out of anger. Yeah, we are yes to the Rage. Okay. They okay. do okay. not have rage. So jealousy, anger. His dad reacts out of a sense of despair. Out of a dis out of a sense of despair, a lack of hope. Yeah, jealousy and anger, that's the general response to this, to this dream. So then what did the brothers do? Alex? They threw him into a pit. They threw him into a pit, right? And so, and people they found threw him into a pit, and then what? Thomas, what did you do? They, they, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him, yeah? Oh, wait, that was Kill him? <laughs> they sold him into slavery into Egypt. Yes. Yes, they threw him in a pit and they sold him into slavery in Egypt. And stripped him of his robe. Ooh, his colorful robe. Oh, God. You guys get it? No. No. Yes. She's a Yes. Okay, Good? No. No. Yeah, we good. Okay. Oh, did you get it, Evan? Okay, sorry. So why didn't they kill him? Why didn't they kill him? Alex? Because they knew they could still make money off of him. Okay. Okay, that could be part of it. That's not what the text says, but that, that really could be part of it. Joel? He's one of the brothers that want to kill him. So what they did, they threw him into a pit, and he would save them, and then he would become the favorite son. That he would, he would try to be the favorite son. Okay, it might have been out of a sense to be the favorite son, but the point is, is that one of the brothers did not want Joseph to die. Anybody know that name? 
Yeah. Thomas, do you know that answer? I might be messed up. Put your hand down. No. <laughs> no, he's tired. Riley? Oh, Riley? Reuben, good. Oh, Reuben, Reuben did not want Joseph to die. And so he yeah. speaks out against his brothers mm -hmm. and they throw him in a pit. So how does Jacob, Israel, respond to this? Actually, I'm sure. All right, Alright, Thomas. What? Um, what do you respond? He's probably sad because they said that he got hit by a wild animal. Yeah, he's, he's really sad, right? He's so sad that what? Does anybody catch it? Cora? He tore his clothes and put on sackcloth. He tore his clothes, he put on sackcloth, and then there's one more thing. Ashley, do you know it? He went into like despair. He does go into despair, yeah, but he refuses to be comforted. Aww. He refuses to be comforted. His despair is so deep that he refuses to be comforted. Because he doesn't want to be alright. Are you sure? All right. Wait, no, wait, wait, I'm gonna turn Wait, wait, wait. Ashley and I are used to debating too much. I'm ready for the next question. There's the next question. You must have one. We're going to the game. Game! I'm ready for the game. All right. Can we go outside again? What? We do the game. I hope we're playing. Fucking shit. And this part I got with that. Woo! I played it. We're gonna do what we did last time. Okay, we're gonna be we're gonna be very quiet. We're gonna go right out the store, outside, and out to the grass. I'm gonna actually stay. Okay. So we're gonna stay nice and quiet. I will turn. So I will turn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be a very cool. All right, so let's continue. What happens to Joseph in Egypt now? What happens to him in Egypt? And we're thinking the first things that happened to him in Egypt. Okay, we'll get to those later things later. We're going to start with those first things. Ellie? That he got... He went to jail. He went to jail, right? Did he deserve it? No. No, he didn't deserve it. He was faithful in everything that he was asked to do, but yet he was thrown into prison. He undeserved his leave. He got thrown into prison. Right. Good way to put it, Katie. Mm -hmm. Ashley. Did you... I did not mix up your names, I just said them wrong. Alright, so what happens during this time in prison? What goes on? Thomas? Um, he meets the uh, chef and the uh, wine taster and interpreter games. Yeah, he meets the cup bearer and he meets the baker and he interprets their dreams. Good. He interprets the dream. Yeah. Of his fellow prisoners. What? Why is that important? Why is that important, Cora? Um. First, well, after the answer, I would like to say what the answer was. So it was important because God helped Joseph to like have his people remember him, and so they would know what was going to happen to them. He did, and there for a while. And the dreams that he interpreted for the cup bearer was he would be restored in three days, and then the other person would be hung in three days and eaten by birds. <laughs> yeah, so. The cupbearer, the cupbearer is restored. The baker dies, uh, but the important part here is that this leads to the cupbearer remembering Joseph I was going when to Pharaoh needs to. Why didn't you call me? I have that answer. This Cora answered. That was the first answer. The cupbearer remembers Joseph when Pharaoh needs an interpreter. Good.
Interpretation of Pharaoh's dream. City. Do you remember it? No. Oh, that's okay. Carter? Alex. I call Alex. I'm sorry, dude. What's the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream? They'll have several years of famine. There's going to be several years of famine, but that's not quite all of it. I'm sorry, Keilana hasn't said much today. I know, I, I can always rely on you for an answer. I know. Is it okay if I go to Keilana? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, you just broke up. There's seven years of good, like, food and There's going to be seven years of plenty. There's going to be seven years of really good crops, but then there's going to be seven years of famine. So, so what happens? What, what's the result? Ashley? Um, Joseph makes, I mean, Pharaoh makes Joseph his right-hand man so that he will be in charge of the plentiful food so that during the seven years of famine they'll actually have food stored up. Right. They store up the food during the seven years of plenty, right? And then during the seven years of famine, they're able to ration it so that fair, so that Egypt is saved. So that Egypt remains safe. There's enough food for everybody. Yeah. So Joseph is given the authorities. He's made basically the second most powerful man in Egypt. And Egypt is saved. Right, so then what happens with Joseph's family? Leo? What happens with Joseph's family is they had nothing to eat, so they but they heard that Egypt had plenty. So they went to Egypt and then they talked but they had talked to Joseph. They come and then they had, I guess talked to Joseph for um, stuff to eat. Good. Yeah, so they, they came to Egypt. Because Egypt has food, right? And the family was going hungry. They didn't have food because of the famine. Good. No, 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 no. no. Whoa. Oh, good. I'm not going no. yet. No. 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 It's a dumb movie. I know that name, I think. Oh, wait, Mexican Train? I think that's what it's called. Oh, I love that game. I played that before. Oh. I'm not really mad at it. Be good. Alright. Wait, every single time I get in my friend, I just take care of that. Good. Good? Everybody good? Yeah. Alright. So what does Joseph do? What does he do now? Thomas? He gives them the food. He gives them the food, right. But there's more to it than that. Ashley. He gives his family forgiveness and helps Egypt through the famine years. Not but yet. There's more. <laughs> not, not yet. You guys are getting way ahead of me. What, what does he do first, though? Way before forgiveness. Cora? All right, so he... Um, he, take, he takes 
say that you have to find to me. They come back with Benjamin. He gives them food. And then he places one of his silver cups in Benjamin's sack and then sees what the brothers will do to make sure he's not guilty. And then he reveals to them something. Good. Good. So. And the story. So there's this, there's this thing that happens where he forces the brothers to go back and to get Benjamin, to bring Benjamin back so he can see Benjamin. Okay, but then when Benjamin comes back, he puts a silver cup in Benjamin's sack. And then, as a result, he threatens to punish Benjamin for stealing. Yeah. In all of this, he pranks and tricks his brothers. He pranks and tricks his brothers. Yeah. So he hasn't met Benjamin yet. Because Benjamin wasn't alive when he came to Egypt, right? No. I don't think that's right. I should check that. Yeah, he wasn't born there. I had looked this up several times, and I think the conclusion that I come to was that, was that Benjamin was born long before it was a chance to... <coughs> it was just good for him to see his I think he was oh, born yeah, Because was Rachel was dead before, before he ever had dreams. His mother was dead before he ever had dreams, which means that Benjamin was born before that. Okay? That's why scholars argue over who was the moon in his dreams, whether it was Rachel or Leah. Uh, Alright, so, there are two big reasons why he pranks his brothers. I said one of them. You did say one of them. Yeah. But you said the second one of them. What was the first? What's the first one? Leo? Because he wanted sort of away in revenge, but not too serious. Okay, revenge? In a way. Like no, him in that, would be that would be unholy. That would be unholy. Kind of, but that's the second one. We'll get to that, okay? Okay? But the first reason why he does it is something a little bit more righteous intention. Thomas? Um. Do you know? Cora? To test them? To test them! He wants to test them to see if they had changed. He tests his brothers in hopes that they had changed. I thought that was the second one. It's the same act, so. Ashley, do you know the second one? No, I was going to ask a question. Oh, what's your question? Oh, did they change? Did you want they to read the, the story? Yeah. They had changed. Do you want to read the story? Why don't we go ahead and read that? Let's look at it. Yeah. Genesis 44. Everybody go to Genesis 44. Can actually read? Skip back. Can actually read? Everybody go there. Can come. Everybody go actually read? Yeah, let me read. No, please. I can say. Alright, Genesis 44. So here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start here, and we're just going to do one verse at a time. You have to read. You have to read. Okay. Um, I do want to read more. I want to read. I think you read my part for me. You guys can be exempt if you really want. You are welcome to read, though. I don't like reading. I can read for Katie. I can read for Katie. No, Katie needs to read. Katie, can you read? Yes, yeah. Please read. Yeah, I have a book. Thomas, do 
Where's your Bible? It's in my mind. I memorized everything. All right, everybody listen. Everybody listen. Evan, can you start us? Genesis 44. Stewart. brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. They fell before him to the ground. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? Ourselves, God has found the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are the Lord's servants. But we are also in whose hand and the cup has been found. But he said, Far it far be it from me that I should do so. Only a man in was and who the cup was found shall be my servant. But as for you go in peace for your faith. Then Judah went up to him and said, O oh my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? 
And he said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a young brother, the child of his age, old age. His brother is dead, and he alone is left with his mother's children, and he, his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I might, may set my eyes on him. Number 26. He said, We cannot go down if our youngest brother goes with us. Then we will go down, for we cannot see the man place unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore you two sons? If one of them went away and never returned, doubtless he was torn into pieces by some wild animal. I have never seen him since. Now if you take his brother away from me and, harm, and any harm comes to him, you will send this grieving white-haired man to his grave. Now therefore, as, I, as soon as I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, then as his life is bound up in the boy's life, as soon as, the, as, soon as he sees that the boy is not with us, he will not die. He will die. And your servants will bring down the prayers of his servant, a father with sorrow to sheep, 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 For your servants became a pledge of safety for the boy to my father, saying, I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father all my life. Now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the boy. trying to test them on. Catch it, Ashley? To see if they're still going to be unholy and mean to him. Okay, to not to him. Not to him. He's not concerned about his own well-being. Cora? To see if they trusted God. No. Alex? To see if they changed. To see if they have changed. What does that mean? If they had changed, what would they have done? Or if they hadn't changed, what would they have done? Ashley? Um, they would not have asked for the younger brother back because last time when they got rid of Joseph, they hurt their father's feelings. And so now he was asking if they would hurt their father's feelings again. Sure. I mean, it's deeper than feelings. Uh, he, they really hurt their father in so many ways and if uh, so that you're exactly right though they wanted to see if they would do the same thing that they did to Joseph to Benjamin they wanted to see if they would once again get rid of the favored son go against their father's intentions 
And so, do they? Do they get rid of Benjamin? No. They don't. They don't. So the, do they pass the test? Yes. Yeah, they pass the test, right? They pass the test. Cora, do you have some bad? I know what the second one is. All right, what's the second one? To show forgiveness. To show forgiveness. <laughs> you look on the cheat sheet. To cheat. show forgiveness. Now, why does he use this test cheat. to show forgiveness? He reveals himself, right? He reveals himself to be Joseph, and he forgives his brothers. That's an important part of this, right? But why? Why does he use the prank, this prank, to forgive them? Why is this significant? We're getting into some, into some next level stuff. So, this is going to be a bit tougher. Cora? Um, he does that because when they were him, the slavery, they would think he would never be able to forgive them, but he tries to show like, mercy on him and forgiveness to show that God has like, provided for him and they didn't think he's They don't expect that forgiveness, right? Because they've done a lot of really bad stuff. But that's not why he does the prank. Why does he use the prank to show forgiveness? Would it have been enough for him to reveal himself to them and forgive them? Would it have been enough, Ashley? No. Why not? Because they're siblings and siblings tease each other. Right. That's exactly why. No, that's exactly why. Are you serious? I'm serious. That's exactly why. If he had forgiven them, it would have been just like old times, where he is looking down on them. Where he is looking down on them. But because he pranks them, it's just like their brothers again. It's just like their siblings again. And because of that, the forgiveness is much more meaningful. The forgiveness is much more meaningful. Good. Good. But that is the point here. That's the point, is that he's showing forgiveness to his brothers, and he's also testing them to see if they change. Good. You have to wait till he says it. So how does Joseph's dreams come true? Peter? Can I read the verses 5 through 11? It's the dreams. Do you guys want to look at the dreams? We can look at the dreams. No. no. I'll look at it by myself. No. Uh, all right. Peter, you want to read us? Read that for us oh, then? Sure. All right. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheep. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us, or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept saying in mind. Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing a flock of Shishon? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to him, here I am. Good. Good. So, what was the interpretation of the dream? What was the main point of that dream? Riley? Yeah, that his whole family is going to bow down to him, right? Including his, his mother and father. Exactly. Exactly. And so, how does this dream... How do these dreams come true? Alex? He becomes second in command in Egypt. Yeah, he becomes second in command in Egypt, right. But what else? What else happens? Cooper? Um, he, uh, um, 
Um, he like got a job or something? He did get that job, right? He's the second in command of Egypt. But it's not just that, that he has that authority. Leo? It's because he, they, were, um, they came to get food. And so that when they had to go get their brother, like when they, they were wanting to spare them, but they're on the ground. Good, good. It's not just that Joseph has authority, but that he saves his family. He has authority over his family. Good. So what is the significant point here? What am I getting at? This is where the mind reading comes in. Yeah. You move my head. Cora? Um, that we should forgive others no matter what they do. Good. That's a good takeaway. Good. That's, that's kind of what we talked about last week, too, is that we need to forgive one another. We need to live in that forgiveness, that grace. What else, Katie? Can I go get some water? There's no water here? Yeah. We're almost done. Yeah. Almost done. It won't be much longer. All right, Ashley? Um, it points more to Jesus' time because, um, it kind of makes it easier to forgive others when you know that they have done something wrong. Yeah. Like, you know, like, when you get your car repaired, I think I kind of see where you're going. It's not quite where I'm going. It's an interesting thought. That's like, I got a lot of that last year. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. All right, so but, but what's the significant point going on here? Don't go quite to Christ. Let's stick with the theme of talking about the triune God, especially the Father. Um, Son, Holy Spirit. Don't go quite to Christ yet. We'll get there. Cora? That's true. That's true. We should never stop believing in God, even when things get hard. That was kind of the point of the activity that we did today, right? What did we, I mean, what, what did we do? What, what was our activity about? What's that? Cart? Not falling in the grass and trying to flip over the tarp. Yeah. Without, yeah without. You needed to flip over the tarp without falling off the tarp into the grass. Right? And what made that difficult? What was so difficult about that? Leo? Uh, I was just going to say an answer that probably wouldn't be, but for this case. Um, but what the point was is you gotta trust each other and work with each other with the activity. Uh, that's a good takeaway. That's a good takeaway. You guys needed to work together. You needed to trust each other, right? As you work together, as you communicated together to complete the task, right? It's a, it's a communication. Yeah, that's a good one. You didn't get to communicate no, because you, you had done it before. Because you had done it before. I was just eating because I knew what to do. Cora? What made it hard? What was hard about that activity? It was hard because everyone was like standing on it. If it was just one person, it'd be easier. But when you have like five people, it just has like so many like family members on it. So it's hard to turn. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was that was a real thing that was very hard about that activity, right? It was harder than it looked. It was harder than it looked, right? It was harder than it looked. And that's going to link to what we talk about here. What was that significant point? A significant point. We've been talking about it for weeks. What was, what was significant about Noah? What was significant about the relationship between God and Noah? If 
found especially in their safety in the ark. To take away sin, okay. Thomas? He was faithful. God was faithful. God was faithful to his promises. And he takes care of his people. God is faithful. Good. It even says in the next question. It gives you the answer. Oh, we can look at that. Exactly. God is faithful. We had a lot of good discussion here that we're going to apply now. But the point that I wanted I want us to grab here is that God is faithful. He's faithful to his promises and he takes care of his people. God is faithful. God is faithful. Yeah? Can you please move on to the next one? No, not yet! Not yet. You can tell me else. I'm not asking you to answer it. I'm asking you to move on. How are you? Are we going to... Is this going to take us until 7.30 or is it going to end like a little early? We'll see. If we end early, we'll have a popcorn prayer. Popcorn prayer. All right, let's keep going. You guys good? Good? All right. All right, so how is God faithful to you? How is God faithful to you, Alex? By the way, by the stuff you do, he plans it. Okay. Okay, he plans the good works that we do ahead of time, right? He takes care of us. Evan? He forgives our sins. Good. Good. What else? What else does God do? What is, how is He faithful to you? Ashley? He promised us, promises us forgiveness through baptism and communion. Good. Through the sacraments, He gives us forgiveness. Cora? He's faithful to His promises and takes care of His people. That's true, but how is He faithful to you? How does He show that to you in your everyday life? Did you have some to add? Uh, Cora said. Cora said, it. stole your thunder. Ooh. Cooper. <gasps> ah. He uh. He's um. Nice. <laughs> yes. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Where do you get your food from? God. No, the ground. The store. Ground. Where do you get your ground. clothes from? The, the ground. Store. Ground. The ground. Where did they all come from? The ground. The store. Uh, the of the uh, earth. Not the cloud. The, the store. store. No. No. The store. God. Who created everything? God. 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 The store. Who, who, who gave you food? God. Who gave you clothes? The store. God. God. God gives you God gives you everything that you need for your life. He faithfully takes care of you each and every day. Write down a, a few examples of things that He gives you in your daily life. Ways in which He is faithful to His promises. He promises us He promises us eternal life with Him in heaven. Right. Good. Uh -huh. Good. And that's the ultimate hope that we have. And that promise. That promise found in who? God. Jesus. Abraham. Jesus. Good. You're not wrong. Jesus. You should know that. I heard Jesus. Well, you said not to. Ashley, can you look at Romans 8 for me? I already did. I was already there. Ashley already I was doing it while we were answering... Entering number 25. Ashley is on it. Already did it, sorry. I'm sorry, I already asked Ashley. Yes! Please don't choose me. There'll be plenty of chances to read this year, I promise. I promise. I don't want to read it. Right. Just 8. I know the question. 828. Okay, listen. Do you want me to start reading? Yes, please. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. Want to be reading? 
Was that the end of 28? Yeah. Yeah. Then no. Okay. Thank you. So what is God's promise to us? Alex? That was his flood. That was his promise to Noah in the rainbow. But what from Romans? Leo? His love. His love. And how is that manifested here in Romans 8? How is his love shown in Romans 8? Yes, she can. Do you have it, Leo? No. Well, it's, I'm reading it. Uh, can you read it out loud for us again? And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. Good. So as people who love God, who have been called to be His children, how does God work in our lives? What is his promise for us? Ashley? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Leo? All that is good. All that is good. Good. A little bit more. Cora? Um, heaven. Eternal life. That, that's part of it, right? He promises that he's going to work all things together for our good. He's going to work all things together for our good. Now what does that mean? Let's talk about that for a minute. Does that mean that you all are going to have a Lamborghini and a Mustang? Yes. 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 I, I can millions, wear millions, of class millions of dollars. So I, I can wear it. I want to wear it. That are good, not our wants. Right. He's going to work. To, he's going to work for our good, not our wants. Does that mean that we're not going to suffer anymore? No, no. No. That's not what that means. We still suffer regularly. Right? There is still sin in the world. And that sin affects us in a very negative way. But what is that promise? That promise that he gives us. Ashley, you said it. You remember it? What is that promise, that ultimate promise that we have? Eternal life. We have the promise of eternal life. He works together all things good. Meaning that at the end of all of this, we have eternal life. Peter? We do that, what's it called? Prayer where he, like, how like you go, you, you say you open prayer. Squeeze prayer? Yeah! Squeeze prayer! Squeeze prayer! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Alright, let's, let's, everybody make a circle up here. We're going to do a squeeze prayer. Circle. Hold on, guys. Wait, Ashley, I need to talk to you about this. Do you, do you know the place that? Did you know these guys? We've got plenty of room. Okay. Stretch out. I'm praying about them. Real black all that. Do you guys remember how we do this? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Joel, oh, poor Joel. I mean, you Somebody let Joel in. Give me the poor Joel. Poor Joel. Get back in. Get back in. Okay, when Cora's ready, we can start. Everybody cheer Cora on. Cora, Cora, Cora. Cora. start us off, I'll squeeze the hand to my right, they'll say a petition and then squeeze the hand on, on their right. Okay. And when it gets all the way back to me, I will close us in prayer. Alright? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for our, your word that we can learn more about you and your love for us. We thank you, Lord, that each and every day we can learn more about you. And all because of the amazing work of your Son, Jesus Christ. Um, please, um, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for everything we have in the world. 
Please give forgiveness to the people that need it most. Thank you for joining us this morning back here. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for helping us to be here today to learn more about you. And thank you for giving us the technology that we have to help others learn more about you. <laughs> um, please help the people in Indonesia for all their troubles in the world. Thank you for helping us learn more and more about God as we go through pre confirmation and Please help those all that have been hit with natural disasters or have been sick. Thank you for having everyone here and safe travels here in Indonesia. Thank you for giving us this time together and for all the stuff you do. things on our hearts that we ask in your name. Amen. Now take your hands and give a nice big what? <laughs> 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 